And joining in the conversation now via Skype is a legal practitioner and political analyst, Michelle Agatise. Good evening, Mr. Agatise. Good evening, Amaka. How are you? Um, very well, thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you clearly. All right, today we woke up to the, you know, the sad news of the death of uh, the chief of staff, Abba Kiari. And uh, so far in the news, we've also seen that he's been laid to rest. Uh, but there are conversations ongoing. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not you saw the visuals about social distancing being breached. And people are worried about you know, the, number, the crowd that we saw uh, during that funeral. Are you also concerned that you know, that's a major issue uh, with the situation that we have at hand, COVID-19, which is quite contagious? Yes, um, I think it's a very important issue, actually. Um, we have to understand that um, this is a disease that's not a respecter of persons. This is a disease that has, you know, gone after the high and the mighty. And, um, you know, to breach WHO guidelines on social distancing, as well as presidential guidelines and directives, um, especially by such a high-ranking ex-member of the presidency and those who were supposedly well-wishers, um, I do not think that this is the way to go. Um, we do not want a situation that we have an upsurge of cases arising as a result of, you know, the close proximity that people were um, at the funeral today. So I do not think that that was the right way to go. Again, this points uh, to the uh, question uh, that many others are raising. Is it a question of we, we say something and we don't follow through or we don't understand the intensity? Uh, are we taking this disease serious enough in this country? Yes, um, for me, I think it's a mix of two things. It's a mix of, number one, not complying with what you have said. So what is good for the goose is not good for the gander. And I also think it's a situation that we are paying lip service, in many respects, to um, defeating this virus. Um, you know, you see issues in foreign lands, especially in the UK, I think it was Scotland, where the health minister had to resign her post as health minister. Why? Just because she went from one of her houses to the other house, you know, breaching the guidelines that she herself as president had laid down. So it's a similar situation here where we have laid down, um, you know, guidelines. We have said that people should not move around. Uh, Lai Mohammed has said that there would not be funerals. And the president in his last speech said that this is not a joke. So, um, I do not then think that we should be having, you know, these exceptions, especially at this trying time. You know, yesterday we saw 52 new cases, I think, which was an optic. Um, this was the situation that Italy and Spain were just last month. So um, I think we need a bit more seriousness, especially if you want the followers to comply, then right from the top, you know, the top should also comply. Um, and I hope that um, we would all take note of this and, um, you know, do better because um, the repercussions will be much, 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 much more severe than what we have already experienced thus far. I mean, COVID-19, uh, others would say uh, uh, it's a um, respecter of no person. And during this time, we've also seen that somehow it has exposed some lapses, you know, that we have in the leadership and in our system. For you, what stands out mostly as an issue that the government of the day needs to look at in the face of COVID-19? Yes. Sorry, I didn't quite get the end of your question. What's your question again? If you can just recap briefly. All right. My question is, uh, COVID-19 has proven to be a respecter of no persons, and it has also exposed some gaps in our leadership. Uh, for you, what will be the most important leadership issue that needs to be tackled during this time as we are faced with uh, COVID-19? Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I think that um, what we see at the moment is a failure of leadership over the past few decades, where our healthcare systems are in shambles, where we cannot have research at our educational institutions about the vaccines or the medication that would deal with this. So I think this is a failure of leadership, not about COVID-19, but a total failure of public service in the country. Now. I think the day of reckoning has come. We have also seen the impact in the falling oil prices. And I would hope 
and expect that at governance levels, we begin to take the right decisions that will enable us to understand that things are no longer business as usual. Furthermore, I think that for many of us, of us who for so long have considered ourselves to be armchair you know, um, politicians, um, enough for us to criticize on the sidelines without getting involved, um, now we see that the impact of what goes on in governance can have a real impact on our daily lives, our movement, our jobs, our work. And as a result of that, I would expect a more engaged citizenry come 2023. I would expect that people hold their governors to account, their local government chairmen to account, their presidents and their representatives to account. And more, more importantly, I would also expect that with the governance system and the people who are in governance, seeing that this is a disease that they cannot fly out of the country to get respite from, um, they would then begin to see the seriousness with which they need to take this on board. Michelle Agatis, a legal practitioner and analyst, thank you very much for your time and keep safe. No, thank you so very much, Amaka. You keep safe.